So here they are after a solid couple of months of leaks, tidbits and more, the Samsung Galaxy S10 and S10 Plus are finally with us. Let's give you our first impressions. So there isn't a great deal we didn't already know, but that doesn't mean we weren't excited. The smaller S10 really does have a great balance of size and power, whereas the S10 Plus does stack up well with the Note 9 for those wanting an even bigger handset. There really hasn't been much left to the imagination thanks to the leaks and renders, but that doesn't mean either handset is underwhelming in the design stakes, far from it. They both feel assuring and sturdy in hand, with my personal preference being that of the S10 Plus, having used the Note 9 for over 6 months at this point. Around the front that display is easily one of the highlights, as is often the case with any Samsung flagship. The AMOLED panel is simply superb and at first glance I can't quite discern the difference between it and the Note 9 panel, but it is most definitely on par. Now the punch hole display cutout is one that I feel is a solid compromise, but it really doesn't differ that much from a notch in all honesty. The solitary hole on the smaller S10 is definitely neater, but the S10 Plus does have some neat tricks courtesy of that secondary lens. I wasn't a big fan of the notch on other devices, but I am a fan of this design, if only as it makes it feel like less of a big deal being shoved towards the upper right of the phone. That said, unlike a centrally placed notch though, these punch holes do actually affect the UI in many more respects. You see status bar icons shift to the left to accommodate the display adornment in that regard, a notch in some ways is much less intrusive. It will also alter the selfie taking experience too, but more on that during our full review coming soon. I think the punch hole excels in full screen applications, so things like videos and so forth. I suppose whether it's a big deal or a problem is completely up to you. Now on the back the cameras are equal, but it's difficult to get a true indication of what it's capable of in a launch event scenario. The new super night shot will be interesting, but it's odd that Samsung didn't opt for a standalone mode that we can utilise during daytime settings. The reverse wireless charging is another mode that is a nice feature to include, but it serves a dual purpose of being able to charge the Galaxy Buds. Whether or not you'll use this feature if you don't purchase those earbuds is another question entirely, but there is no doubt that it is a neat option to charge multiple devices with just the one cable. That is about all we've had the opportunity to really get to grips with due to the super short time we've had with each S10 model, but expect a much more in-depth look at both come the full review. Be sure to subscribe to be among the very first to see those once they drop, and be sure to let us know in the comments section what features or hardware you're excited for on the S10, or what you'd like to see in our full review. Hopefully you've enjoyed this super quick hands-on, but until next time, this is Damien for 95 Google, and I'll speak to you later.